the story is long, winding, and in the end, seemingly pointless. I'm not talking about the latest Hollywood movie, although the same description could probably apply. I'm talking about those stories that Grandpa liked to tell. Somewhere in the story was a nugget of wisdom that you could use, but it was a lot of hard work to figure out where. The problem is that most of your readers won't dig through your long, rambling articles to find the wisdom, or just the information, that you can provide. For that, you need a little bit of wisdom from the Egyptians, or at least journalism. We've all had that feeling where we would wish the people we were talking to would get to the point and tell us what they're going to tell us so that we could get on with our day and our life. And that's the heart of the style that journalists call inverted pyramid. They communicate the information that has the broadest application and interest first. They communicate the basics of who, what, when, where, and leave why for the second paragraph or beyond. By focusing on the most important things first, we allow our readers to decide whether they care. If you're talking about an event that happens at a time when they're gone or when they know they can't participate, they can decide to ignore the entire rest of the message. And that's okay. With the broadest and most applicable information out there, they can then turn their attention to the backstory and the conditions that might make the information not apply to the reader. An easy objection to this approach is that you might unnecessarily concern people for whom the news doesn't apply. That's possible, and in fact, even probable. However, their fears and concerns will be short-lived. If immediately following the information, you explain the conditions under which the information applies. It's not the void where prohibited kind of disclaimer that's important. It's the clarification of what kind of people are eligible and what the limitations are. You'll often hear in advertisements, while supplies last. It's so short and unremarkable that we often skip our thinking right over it like a rock on a calm pond. However, these are exactly the kinds of disclaimers that come next. With the most impactful information and conditions under which it applies out of the way, it's time to come to the backstory. What happened that led up to the event or the opportunity? It's the part of the story that either tells the reader why or gives them the information they need to formulate their own why for the event happening. Journalists and their attempts to remain neutral often portray the backstory without framing why things happened. Assigning a why is ascribing intent or motive, and that's nearly universally a guess. However, in our corporate communication, we don't need to be neutral. In fact, it's our job to explain the why behind events so that they're less scary and there is greater understanding of the character of the organization. So, our backstories as corporate communicators not only can but should have why embedded in them. My apologies to the Egyptians. Writing in pyramid style isn't about the great monuments. It's about writing from the broadest to the narrowest. To be effective at communicating, we need to write about the things that are the most interesting to the most people and work our way down to the least interesting items at the bottom of our articles and our emails. Music